what is going on guys welcome back to another video now this today this video should be the final mechanical slash service job that we should have to do on this 1.2 fiat punto and uh it's basically just going to be a complete brake fluid flush now the car has been sitting for the best part of three years and they recommend that you change brake fluid every two years. Brake fluid being very hygroscopic, so that means it absorbs water. So um, whenever you get uh, the spongy brake sensation, you know, the, um, the brake has a lot of uh, travel, the brake pedal has a lot of travel, and it just feels like you have no brakes. That's usually because the brake fluid has absorbed some water. That water has then evaporated. And what are you usually left with when water has evaporated? Air, right? So then you get air in your brake pipes. And um, yeah, it's not a good um, scenario right there. So uh, we have positioned the car. Uh, I've got the car half in the garage. We're going to start at the back because you want to start at the wheel that's furthest away from the brake server. The brake server is usually on the driver's side at the front in the engine bay. I have to check on that though. Um, so we're gonna start on the rear, near side, which is the passenger side, uh, brake, uh, what I'm trying to say, we're gonna start on the brake, uh, what is the word, brake drum, because these have uh, drums on the back, not discs. Um, so we're gonna, probably find some uh, interesting um you know some interestingly rusty uh, some uh, bleed nipples so that'll be fun um but i've got my granddad with me today i'm at my granddad's house right now and i'm gonna get him to push on the brake pedal while i um undo the bleed nipple and then bleed the um, whole brake fluid but yeah i'm gonna try and show you the whole process as best as possible just bear with me um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, let's get right to it. Okay, so on the driver's side, the off side, we're in the engine bay and the brake servo is there. It goes through the firewall and uh, this is the brake, um, brake fluid reservoir. So the furthest wheel away is going to be, like I've said, the passenger side, the near side rear wheel so we've got to jack the car up if this has a fixed axle then we should just be able to jack it up from the axle and they get both wheels off of the ground and um yeah then we've got to get both yeah like i said get both wheels off and uh, access the brakes looking pretty rusty them uh brake drums if you can see that Okay, so I'll just show you the setup here. Because this is a fixed rear uh, beam, rear axle, uh, just jacked it up in the middle of the axle and put the axle stand either side and then left the jack. Still supporting it, just as extra, just as extra support really. So yeah, good to go now. Now, when it comes to actually bleeding your brakes, now there's a few different like methods and a few different like pieces of equipment that you can use. Now, this is just something that I kind of made at home, and it's basically just a bottle with some more brake fluid in, um, and then I've put a hole through the lid and then put like a piece of tube in through it, and that's actually big enough to go for the bleed nipple. And I've just like found this old like duct in. Basically, like a just like a good holder to keep the bottle upright to stop it from falling over, um, and that basically works quite well for me. And then I've got a turkey baster or like a meat baster. And this is just to basically um, suck as much uh, brake fluid out of the reservoir as possible. Just basically going to save you time. It's going to um, basically mean less pumping. Then it's going to be less fluid to get through the whole brake system. 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead, get a spanner, and uh, put this on the bleed nipple of the offside rear wheel. And uh, yeah, then I'm going to call my granddad to start coming to uh, pump the brakes. Okay then, so I just thought I'd show you for any of you guys that's actually doing it for the first time. If you're not too sure what the bleed nipple looks like, it is usually somewhere near the brake line going in. It's actually that thing there, and I realise you probably can't see that well, but there's usually a rubber cover over it. And that exposes the nipple just there. And then it's just a case of finding the correct size spanner that's going to fit on top okay, of it. Okay, so I'll just show you the setup, how it looks when we're ready to start bleeding the brakes. So we have the uh, spanner, which in this case is a 7mm, and that is on the bleed nipple, ready to open it. And then we have the pipe going into the bottle of brake fluid. Now, as I also mentioned, I do have a turkey baster, so I'm going to uh, basically suck some of the old fluid out of the reservoir just to make the pumping process a lot easier. And that's just going to go in there. Probably should have took the lid off before I pumped this up, but yeah. And then when you're happy you've pumped as much uh, old brake fluid out as possible, it's then ready to go ahead and put the new stuff in. Well, as much as you can. So this yeah. is topped up. That's actually new fluid in there, but um, the old fluid will be on the bottom and that'll be the first to go out through the uh, bleed nipple on the brakes. And then essentially what the goal is to do is to wait until the new fluid is then coming out of the um, out of the bleed nipples and then that's how you know the uh, brake fluid has flushed through the whole system then so that's the goal anyway. Up, down, up, down, Hold it. Up. Down. Up. Down. Okay then, so both of the rears are done and flushed. Uh, it's just going to be a case of putting the wheels back on you know, lowering the car back down and then doing the same on the front. We're gonna to have to jack up the front, probably from either side and put a uh, actual sand there. Or maybe just do like one at a time, I don't know. But yeah, just get the wheels back on and then let's get it on the ground and then let's get the front in the air. Okay then, so I've just actually ran into a very big problem and I could have like potentially just like ruined the whole day. Now, my granddad did actually mention um, something to me uh, about how one of the um, locking wheel bolts had uh, sheared off and next time he was going to take it back to the garage. This was like years, three years ago or whatever. 
they said that they was going to sort it out. Now, uh, I actually went to take one of the front wheels off, one of the locking wheel bolts, and this, now, this was the locking wheel bolt in question. Now, you can't really tell very well on the camera, but part of the uh, locking wheel bolt key had actually sheared off and lodged its way into the little uh, locking um, key design on the bolt. Now this made it very difficult to actually get this off so what I ended up doing is I thought if I break this key I'm not going to be able to get any of these wheels off again so first thing I've done was removed the other three locking wheel bolts because I've had the problem before where it's got stuck and I haven't been able to you know I've actually broke this key and I haven't been able to get the wheels off and I had to like end up welding like another bolt to the bolt that I couldn't get off and that was just disastrous. So took these off, just put regular um, wheel bolts on which um, came in this little kit so you know just regular wheel bolts and um, and then what I had to do, it took me a little bit of time, about half an hour or so, I had to essentially uh, hammer this key onto the um, onto the bolt and it managed to bite enough. Now I didn't use the impact driver um, because that would have just uh, sent this spinning round and potentially just broke the key. Um, I actually lowered the car back down again at the front and then just got the um, breaker bar on it with the extension and um, while pushing it in as well just about managed to bite on and um, just about managed to get us off. But this will not be going back on. We'll not be using this again. We put in regular bolts on it, so let's put them in. Ready than I am. Yeah, we're Yeah. Right down. Push it down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Up. Down. Up. Okay then. So. Rear's done, both of the fronts are done, and I've topped up the uh, reservoir, and that's sitting around the max line now. So now it's just going to be a case of putting the wheels back on and getting it back on the ground. Okay then, so I'm going to be wrapping this video up um, pretty soon, but uh, we have done the brake fluid flush completely. Now I plan to take this car for an MOT today, so I'm just going to do some, you know, some obvious visual checks to make sure um, that, to the best of my knowledge, that 
it um, should pass the MOT. Obviously I've bled the brakes, I've inspected them and um, there's enough like wear left on the discs and the pads so I know that's fine. Um, I know there's enough tread on all the tyres. Now I'm going to go around and check all the balls, make sure they're working and then um, I guess it's just other things like the handbrake, making sure all the seat belts and stuff like that work and obviously there's no engine management lights so to be honest I don't really see why it shouldn't pass um, you know, I don't really see why it shouldn't pass the MOT. It's actually got two new springs on the rear because um, that was done when my uh, granddad last had its service. And um, yeah, you know, I don't see why it shouldn't pass, uh, to be honest. Like, I guess there could be something like a corroded brake line. Um, but then again, it's only doing like 38,000 miles. So it's not really, you know, high enough um, mileage to even warrant, you know, some any kind of corrosion um, you know on the brake lines but yeah so like I said I don't think I don't really see why it shouldn't fail obviously I'm going to check all the bulbs and things like that just little things so I can check myself and um, yeah see if we're good to go So hazards working fine. Reverse light, that's working fine. Uh, fog at the bottom there, that's working fine. One of these is the brake light bulb, so I guess we'll just check that now. Brake light's working fine. Go around to the front. Side markers working. Let's check the other side. Yeah, the other side marker working. Front indicator's working. Main beam and side light working. Main beam and side light working. It's just the high beam now. main beam okay then so I'm just gonna test the brakes <laughs> okay yeah I'm, the brakes definitely work let's test the handbrake it stops us eventually so yeah so all bulbs are absolutely fine uh, all the brakes are good, all the tyres are good, handbrake's fine, and um, yeah, I think that's like pretty much everything that I can check, like myself, obviously when it's up on the ramp they'd be able to see all underneath, they'd be able to see if there's any holes in the exhaust or whatever, but I, I just know that there's not going to be any holes in the ex exhaust because you'd be able to hear it blowing, and obviously, you know, there isn't any um, strange noises or anything like that. Uh, the suspension all looks pretty good, you know, um, like I said, the two rear springs, they have been done. And um, like I said, the car's only done like 38,000 miles, so I don't really see that any uh, suspension components could have like failed in that time. I mean, there's things like the drop links, they're, you know, prone to go in um, on cars like this. But, um, you know, if uh, if it has to have new drop links or whatever then obviously i'll be fitting them in the future um but yeah i don't really see any other reason why it shouldn't pass the mot uh yeah i think that's everything i can do for now mechanically i think i'm going to wrap this video up right now so hopefully you guys have enjoyed it please give it a like if you have 
leave a comment down below subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in that next video where i'll be finally giving this thing a wash i'll be cleaning the engine bay the exterior and the interior because if you have a look this thing is absolutely filthy inside so that'll be fun all right thanks for watching i'll see you in that next video peace